Bless you, bless you, bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My name is Apostle Peter Daniel. By the special grace of God, you are watching me live through the heaven and hell. The one we used to do by Sunday, from Sunday to uh, Thursday, 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 Sunday to Thursday. That is where we do the uh, heaven and hell. And on Saturday is our uh, Sabbath service, Sabbath service, Sabbath service, Sabbath service. And we also used to do deliverance service, deliverance service. That one is uh, is uh, is also from uh, 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 Saturday night, Saturday night to Thursday night. So only Friday is not, uh, we are not doing anything on Friday, both heaven and hell are in everything. So the Lord will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today, before we go into the message, please let us pray. Our everlasting Father, we want to bless your name because you are faithful, you are gracious, you are powerful in all situations, you are God. Uh, that is why that song says, you are God from beginning to the there's no place for argument. You are God over yourself. You are God forevermore. We ask your Father, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that you will release your word to the heart of your people. You will open the eyes of your people to see the things of the Spirit. You will open the heart of your people to understand the things of the Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for everyone listening to me now. Every student heart, every satanic connection into your life is destroyed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, today we are going to talk about the uh, significance of Amen and the importance of Amen and the implications of Amen. The significance, the import, is it the same thing? So it's the importance and the and the implications of Amen. A M E N, Amen. You will see in the Bible that they are, uh, there are different places where Amen is mentioned. Amen is always, most of the time, mentioned at the end of every prayers. If you look at the apostle, whenever he finished praying, he probably he shared the grace with the brethren. He will put Amen, putting it as a, a sign of authority. And it's a sign of a coverage to the prayer. I'm going to tell you the reason why he's doing that. One of the reasons is because amen has a very important meaning. Amen is a is a is a is a is a language of an Hebrew, and it means yes, it is right. Yes, sure. Or it is me confirmed. Yes, I received. So the amen means acceptations, acceptations, acceptations. When you accept something, you accept it, you claim it, claim it. So when you claim something, that's what amen means. And also, amen also means Jesus. Also means Jesus. Amen is also means Jesus. That's how we see amen, amen, blessings and glory. If you, maybe you have heard that song before. Uh, with times of giving honor, oh, honor my beyond to the Lord forever. Amen. Now, Amen, Amen, blessing and glory. So, Jesus name himself, according to the research, I see that Jesus name himself is also bearing Amen. His name is Amen, Amen. That is Jesus name. His name is Amen. So, and uh, Amen also can be identified into entering a covenant of agreement. Agreement. For example, now, I write, let me say, a man writes a letter and say, who want to go into agreement? Who want to agree with me with this letter? So, and somebody say, I am volunteer. You sign into that letter means you have entered into that covenant of that thing you wrote there. So, you are signing, putting signature as a sign of consent. It means that you are agreeing with that thing. So, now, let me explain to you clearly so that you can understand very well. 
that signing of that letter is the also signing of prayer. When you say amen, it means you are signing into that prayer. But the point we want, what we want to derive here now is not just the meaning, but I want what we want to derive is that the problem there now is that uh, many children of God have been in captive of the, because of this amen of it. Let me tell you very well. All this, if you are a Christian, and whenever you just see that somebody pray for you, you say amen to it. You are already in trouble. The reason I say so is this. These false ministers, false pastors, they are using it as an agreement and covenant to drag you into the occultic powers and bondage. They don't need to lay hands on you before you receive the evil spirit inside you. They don't need to lay hands on you be before you become bound or before you become a captive. Once you say amen to them, Bushiri pray, Prophet Shepard Bushiri pray, and you say amen to his prayer. Already you are in the bondage of Prophet Shepard. Now, a pastor priest, first prophet priest, and you say amen to it, you already you are in the bondage. Except if it is a real man of God that pray for you. When you say amen to a prayer of a real man of God, it's not going to be you and that pastor. It's going to be a connection between you and God. That is why you have to be very careful of who you say amen to. You, you answer amen to their prayer. Because if that person is not a real man of God, there's no way it's not going to affect you. It will affect you. Because it's going to be a dragon. It's an agreement. I've explained to you the meaning of amen. is an agreement to that thing. It's an agreement. And most of these false prophets, whenever they say, Jesus, we bless you, the initial something is that the demon that anointed them is not actually blessing you. It's gracing cause on you. Uh, by the time you now say amen, to that cause now you become you become a victim you become a victim of that cause do you understand me now you become a victim of that cause. you become a victim of that prophet you see that is why you keep having problem upon problems because you have entered into different amen a, a, a different covenant through you saying amen to their prayer i am not talking about laying hands now when you say amen to their prayers it means you they have already laid hands also in you listen to me i want you to start thinking of those false prophets that you have laid your hands on many, many people will say that ah, sir i saw this and this i saw this and this i saw brucey doing this i saw prophet this and he doing this listen to me most of this is because you have entered into a covenant that you did not know. You have entered through you saying amen. Amen is a power of saying agreement. I accept whatever you say. I accept. I enter into a covenant with you. With amen, that's what amen means. When you say amen to prayer, it means you are entering agreement with that prophet, not just the prayer. You might say, but the prayer I say amen to. But if it is coming from a bad source, from an evil source, from a satanic source, then you have entered into a satanic cover. Then you have entered into a satanic cover. So it doesn't matter the kind of uh, what you are making it to say amen into. You see, what matter is that? Where is he coming from? Which source is he coming from? If a false prophet is telling, is praying for you, and you are agreeing into it, you are in trouble. You have been in the bondage already. These are the things that God revealed to me. He revealed to me about some times ago. Today I was, I was, you know, I was, I was asking God yesterday night that what should I teach your people? What is July like teacher? People was telling me this morning now that I should teach you the the import that the reason is people many Christians are in the bondage, one bondage or the other, because they are saying amen to a first prophet priest uh, prayer. You will see a pastor on TV, just on TV, because he has a lot of crowd and is doing miracle. You didn't know the source of his uh, power and weight. You just begin to say amen to his prayer. This is a pro problem that you are facing. Then from saying amen, it doesn't matter where you, whether you, wherever you are, there's going to be a connection of the darkness. We is going to locate you wherever you are. 
he will locate you wherever you are. I've seen somebody who says he's following one pastor. I will not mention his name. He's well known in Nigeria, very well known. He says he's following one pastor. And this sister is someone who God has been using very well. God used to appear to her. God used to do many things to her. But because he was following a false prophet, whenever he prayed, he, you know, he connected in the spirit as amen, amen. And at, at the point, the demon of that, demon working in that prophet began to torment her and it entered her life. As I'm talking to you now, even the sister, a state of, uh, uh, of condition now is very worst. Everything about her life has changed. In fact, she has lost her head. She has lost her communication with the Holy Spirit. The Lord has, has completely left her. He, he cannot hear from God anymore. He's not hearing from the demon. He'll be hearing the voice of the demon clear and clear. The demon will be meaning talking to his ear, telling her to do what she do not want to do. Now, she will, is, the demon is not controlling her seriously now. To the extent that whenever she is praying, the demon will begin to torture her. The demon can begin to do anything to her, injure her in one way or the other, just because he was saying amen to a false prophet. Do you know that when you are saying amen, you see, prayer, let me tell you something about prayer. Prayer is a spiritual communication. It's more than you say amen. It's not a physical communication. Prayer is a spiritual communication that commune in the spirit. Your soul and your spirit is communicating. When a man of God is praying for you and you say amen, and that man is not a man of God, real man of God, and you are saying amen to his prayer. You know, when you say amen, we see that you are saying it from your heart. That from your heart you are saying it is not just your heart. It's a spiritual communication. A soul and spirit, your soul and spirit has been open. The channel of your soul and spirit has been open to receive what is to come. And when you are receiving, believe it is God that is coming, the demon will jump inside there. And the state of the person became a worse passage. It was our. It was our. So, in one way or the other, begin to think of those who have prayed for you. All those are far people. All those abalist people. All those false, false prophets you are following online. You didn't know their source. Hmm? Because you are doing miracle. You say, ah, miracle, miracle, miracle. Pastor, this are, if you go there, in fact, it's miracle is great. And you are following them. Begin to say amen and amen to their prayers. You have entered into covenant. We never know. That is why your deliverance are always very hard. You have to be very careful of pastor you follow. Somebody came to my uh, came to my uh, so, uh, WhatsApp and he said, "Sir, I saw you in a particular place where you are worshiping. Is is it the place you are worshiping a man of God like you?" Preaching road through from God should not be worshiping a kind of place. I said that is where God is giving us the grace to worship. And I'm not ashamed to tell you that. He said, Is that I said, Well, do we have a place we are praying? Pray, we, we are, you know, we have our prayer this day. I said, But we have a prayer camp, but that is a place we are using them pride. If you like, you go say, I don't go follow you again. It's not my problem. I am not here for fame, I'm not here for money. I'm not here for that. I've, I've seen people who have come to me. Do let me talk about it so that it will not look as if I'm, I'm exposing people who have come to me in a different, in a monetary way eh? that can draw my attention so that I can compromise the faith. But I rejected their offers because I have where I am going to. I know who call, I know the person who called me. I rejected their offer. I'm not ready to have their money. It's not the money that they are giving that matters to me, but the kingdom of God. I want to make it to heaven. That is all my, 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 my heart. I want to make it to heaven. That's all. That's what I needed. That's what I needed. I do need anything. I know God will provide for me. 
God is providing for me and I know he will keep on providing for me. So I don't need anybody to, to come and cajole me with money. No, 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 no. What I'm trying to tell you is this. The reality I'm trying to tell you is that you have made a lot of mistakes by entering the covenant of who you shouldn't enter. The Lord says, I should teach you now. When a real man of God is praying for you, he's praying in the spirit of God, so you are connected to God himself. Somebody will come, come to my YouTube, and I thank God that he said that. He said he went to go and pray. He said there are four people that he's praying. I will mention it. I'm not going to hide it here. I'm going to mention it. He said there are four people that he loves to listen to their message. He said, number one, Joshua Seman. Seman. Apostle Joshua Seman. Number two, Apostle Arome. I'm not there. He put it, if you look at my comment on YouTube, it's there. One of my videos is still there. About, I think the one I posted a week uh, a week or two weeks ago, if you look at this there, he said, Apostle Arome. Me, Apostle Peter Daniel, he mentioned my name. Then he mentioned one pastor. I don't know the name of that. I don't know that pastor. We still go and check. So we are four. He now said, he go into prayer and go and pray. And ask God that God, I want to know, sir, who is your servant to these people? Am I right to be listening to them? He said for the first time, maybe it's the first time, I don't know. He said Jesus appeared to, to him in the dream and told him that I don't even know Apostle Joshua Seman and a Roman. He said Apostle Peter, Daniel, and the other one, who is, I forget his name, he said the two of them is the one that they are my servant. Sometimes it is good to confirm who we are following. Sometimes it is good to confirm whether it is I called them. You just listen and listen to anybody. I have seen a sister who called me. She, 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 she's 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 uh, she's controlling the holy nature. And she called me. He said, Ta. He said, I saw you many times in my dream. God used your prayer, your face to speak to me. I said, Well, it is Jesus. It is not me. You are seeing you. I've seen Jesus Christ himself. It's not me. He now said there was a time he was she was praying about something, and he said, Angel of God appeared to her. And told her, and he said, as he appeared to her, he now saw me passing by. He said, she, she saw me passing by in a, in a revelation with somebody that I was already, I was passing with somebody wearing white. He now said that the angel now points to my to, to me. He now said, Follow that man, he will lead you to straight to heaven. Follow him. He now said, Ah, he said, he's a hospital. He said, Yes. Follow him. I'm not saying that I'm not anybody, but I'm trying to explain to you the reality of this minister. I'm not saying I'm the only person. There are ministers who are good. That's why I say confirm by praying. Don't just uh, be, be following anybody anyhow. Some people are committing sins secretly. You didn't know. Eh? You didn't know who they are. And they are praying after amen to their prayer. Whether they come to you physically or not, you have entered into, into a spiritual covenant, covenant that is more than your, 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 your knowledge. It's more than your knowledge. You have entered there. You need to be set free. You need, it's not just a small deliverance. Because I remember there was a testimony of a young man. That young man, he was looking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a testimony of one of the people who went to heaven and hell, hell to heaven. God took him to heaven and took him to hell. This brother is a Christian brother. He's a perfect. Listen to me, oh. Listen to me, oh. This Christian, this brother, is a perfect brother in Christ. He just gave his life to Jesus Christ. And he was so eager to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. He was seriously eager. So he has to go. He went to. Uh, to to uh to to meet one of the pastors and that pastor he has been hearing about the pastor that god is using him very well he's a miraculous pastor doing healing and i said he wants that pastor to lay his hand on him so that he can be he can baptize in the holy ghost so he now went to the pastor uh ministry for the pastor to pray for him as he went there the pastor lay hands on him 
as he begin to lay hands on him, ah, uh, he begin to prophesy and you know speaking in tongue and you know all those contacts. Kind of he he accepted the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and as he accepted, it, as he was going home, as he was going home, he had an accident that same day, and he died. That same day that he got baptized, he had an accident and he died. And when they get to the to heaven, according to one of the person who God showed his revelation. When the, the brother get to heaven, the angel said, we see that you give your life to Jesus. They told him the time he gave her life to Jesus Christ. He said, Jesus Christ. They said that at this time of this and this, you lose your salvation. He said, ah. He said, but I didn't see. He said, you went to go and meet a false prophet to go and lay hands on you from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The angel was telling him. He said, as he was praying to you, he was conjoining demons into you and the demon entered you and the holy spirit vanished from your body and the demons enter your body he said now and the, he said the word of god said for no unclean things we enter here he said you are on a clean vessel you are no more born again you are no more a child of god and a voice sat from heaven and shouted so loud the power that voice is the one that carried him and threw him to hell. As I'm talking to you now, the brother is in hell fire. On top, say he won't go baptized with the Holy Ghost. You know, I'm talking now. When God is telling me this, you might not understand. God is, is telling me, he said, tell my people about what amen has have done. This amen of 18 that pastor praying for you, you just could be caught that pastor here. Eh? He can see vision, he can see your life, he can see something. You now go there and begin to ask. He said, pray for me, sir. He said, hey, may I receive? I, I receive. You are receiving demon. You are receiving evil spirit. You are receiving satanic something into your life. Eh? You are receiving it into your life. Somebody come about some time ago and he said, hey, sir. He said, pray for me, sir. I want you to pray for me. I pray for her, finish. He said, what do you see for me? He said, I don't see. They don't see me. He said, you didn't see anything. Ah. I said, I'm waiting. She, what she wants you to say, just that, oh God, my leg was shallow. Hey, I'm seeing that you are dying. Hey, Kappa Lubaza. In seven days' time, you're going to die. She said, yes, oh Lord, oh Lord Jesus. Oh, that's what he wants me to say. Okay, you have to Kappa Lubaza. You know, hey, sir, bring one million, bring one million, one million, one million, one million, so that we can use prayer to, to wipe it off. And I can't do it. I pray for you. You are asking me, waiting, I see. Ha. I said, I said, I don't see. I said, God didn't tell me. He said, God didn't tell you anything about me. Please pray again. Ha. I was like, I said, please, I'll pray for you, please. He said, yeah, please. I don't know the kind of people we are now. Everybody wanted to be prophesied. You wanted to want to, you want to see vision by all means. Want pastor to see vision for them. And this is what is putting them in the internal bondage, in serious bondage. That is more than their own prayers. This sister that I told you about. That God has been appearing to her, that God promised a brighter future. Now he can she is hardly she cannot pray. When she prays, she's not is something so what have entered her now is more than her prayer life. The funniest part is that whenever she's talking to me, if she says wants to talk to me like this, that demon will tell you, I will not allow you to talk to you, and the phone will just cut off immediately. He will come here again before we cut off immediately. I said, why is he coming? He said, that demon is the one saying, you will not allow me to talk to you. That is just because of saying amen. All of you that you are following for me, lion, I pray God will save your life. I will not say, I will not say more than that. I know many people who have come to my church. I said, what, what do you want to say about for me, lion? So I said, I went to one day, you are talking about for me, lion. You have to be very careful. There are ministers who cover their face with holiness, who are not holiness people. I will not, I will not go there now. All of you that you are following from Naya Debaya, Mama, Mama G, you, you better be careful. You were what? Be careful. Be very careful. I won't say more than that. Be very, very careful. So that you will not end your life in hell. I was, it's about us, but it's the same as you, you are preaching together. Now you talk, but I feel pray to God who she is. 
I won't say more than that. Until God permit me to talk, I will not talk now. So please be very careful of the people who pray for you. This is the message God asked me to tell everyone. The message God asked me to tell everyone. It might look so raw. It might look so serious. But that is the reality fact. And there's nothing that can be done about it. You have to be very careful. If now, another thing is this. If a real man of God pray for you, when you say amen, the prayer himself connects you to heaven. You don't get it now. It's just a, a vice versa. When the children of the devil pray for you, when you say amen, it connects you to the devil. When a man of God pray for you, he connects you to God. He allow, the, he allow your life to access the Holy Spirit. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. I pray you will not end up in hell in Jesus' name. God bless you, my people. God bless you, everyone, in the mighty name of Jesus. This is a message God is asking me to tell you. It might look so raw. Ah, it might look so serious. But this is what God asked me to tell you. To be very careful of who you follow. Be careful of those who lay hands on you. Be careful of those who pray for you. Be careful of the amen you say when they are praying for you. You can only say amen to a right man of God, a true man of God. How will you know? The Bible says you will know them by their fruit. And two, when you ask the Holy Spirit, he will also tell you. He will also tell you. Well, who that man is? Who that is that is? God bless you and God be with you. You are anointed and you are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shalom. Bless you. Bye.